Welcome, friends. I'm Tina Cadini. And I'm Justin Johnson. And we're glad you're worshiping with us today. Thanks for tuning in. Fellowship of Faith. Did I say Fellowship of Faith? I don't know. We're Fellowship of Faith. <laughs> Welcome. Well, I'm so used to you saying it. I just assumed I that you did. I'm trying to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. And I... <laughs> nah, nah. See, this is what throws us off, Tina. we got to stick to the <sighs> game plan here. Game plan. <laughs> game plans are lame. We were just talking before the show. Steve had asked us what we're gonna, what our hot topic was this morning, and we're like, we don't plan. Mm-hmm. And Brianna's like, we they don't, they don't plan. Mm-hmm. They just talk. What cover comes off the top of their head? So that's what we're gonna do. Hence rambling. Yes, hence the <laughs> rambling. Everyone's Today favorite. Today is the surf fair. It is the surf fair. That's which, pretty fun. We got tons of people out here. Yeah, they're all. There's a bunch of stations set up in different. Like, there's a leadership table. There's a other tables. Yeah. I just saw the leadership ones. So. Yeah. Did you talk to anybody? I did not. I didn't either. No. <laughs> I wasn't aware that the surf fair was going to be this weekend because I wasn't here last weekend. So sure. I just jumped into the sanctuary like I normally yeah. do. And Yeah. I, I, no, there's no. a lot of people out there talking and yeah. hopefully they're getting a lot. But a lot of volunteers and hopefully, yeah, yeah. There, a lot of people signed I up on to, time sheets. Okay. So you guys know that I, I don't know if you guys know, I signed up to do, to host a table dinner. Yes. And then right. my husband's like, nah. <laughs> and I'm like, Dang it. But somehow I got invited to the table dinner hosts leader dinner. And so we get there. And then part of it's because, you know, Dave's. Right, right. And so we get there and people are looking at me like, I thought you don't have a table dinner. I'm like, I don't. But Dave RSVP'd me. So here I am. I'm here anyways. So anyway, um, table dinner. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm sure. What was I going to say? Oh, I know. There's. (laughs) <laughs> Seriously, guys, it's bad. But so I'm at this table dinner, and then I come to church here, and there's like a whole bunch of new people that I'm like, oh my gosh! So I sp- I didn't talk to any of the the serving groups because talk I talked to, to all the people that I met last night. That's awesome. Yeah. See, now you're making more connections. I didn't really meet anybody last night. I spent time with them. So more time that you haven't spent. Because Sunday other mornings aren't they goofy? Just like, oh hey. And well, you don't really go deeper. The problem is, and you it's gotta, wonderful to see people. You gotta bounce around because there's so many people you want to talk to. So mm-hmm. you get caught in talking to a long conversation with someone, you miss out the opportunity to talk to someone else. So I always say, like, if you want to have a good conversation, do it after the fact. You know, not after Sunday mornings when people are starting to leave. Then you can sit yeah. down and have a good conversation. I find, in life in general, for me, I find my favorite time is after the initial people have left. And it's the people that are staying at the end. Yes. That's what I enjoy. Yeah, because, again, like, that's where those really strong bonds. Yeah. People will stay and people talk. Just... And next thing you know, it's 1230. You're like, oh, I got to go. I have things to do today. That's what happens to me. I do the Midwestern goodbye where I say, all Welp. right, I'm leaving. Do you say welp? In and... the back corner of the sanctuary. And I have to make it all the way to the doors without finding anyone to talk to. <laughs> oh, doesn't yeah, yeah. happen. So. No. Seriously, when I go to the bathroom, I literally go like this so that yeah. nobody, no like, makes eye contact. Eye contact because, again, you get caught. I'm going to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, guys, like and share. And last week, last I decided week. that I'm calling you guys out Uh-oh. because I was looking at our Facebook profile. We've got between eh, 230 to 317 the last few weeks, like views. Oh. And four shares. Uh, we can ooh, do better than yeah. that. Come on, guys. You guys can do better than let's, that. Share, let's share, 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 share. share, share. <laughs> And I was one of those shares, so you guys can do better than that. And if you find the stream pop up again on your timeline, share it again, even if you already shared it once. Share it twice. Oh, like a a a year-old memory? Yeah, just share it again. Whatever. That could be obnoxious. (laughs) (laughs) See the same service posted four times in someone's profile? Wow, she must have really liked this (laughs) one. (laughs) And it's on women being silent in the church. I don't know. What else do I have? (laughs) Dave was in St. Louis last week. Uh, getting Reagan all situated? Or no, just he was Reagan? down there with oh, Sally with Roth, Sally, and he's going to talk right. about it. So I'm not going to talk about a lot okay, of it right yeah. now. Just a little sneak peek. But, you know, we sent Ben to college right? last week. Uh, how is he liking that so far? He's doing all right. Weekend, he's yeah. joined, I think he's joined the disc golf club. Hey, and there he you went, go. And he went to the Sunday morning service at the chapel. Good. High church. Like, high church. Oh. And uh, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to him too much about <laughs> it. Like, how, like, what to think? But apparently he met Carly Bodinas. Okay. Who, one of our girls that's there now, yep. mm-hmm. and so they met at the chapel. Ben sits, of course, in the second row. Well, it's Ben. And, and it's a long <laughs> chapel. And Carly's like, what? And I'm sure I'm sure she's... once they realized high church and it's not their style, that she probably wanted to book out. But she's like, we're in the second row. You can't Why? do Well, that. you can't leave. You gotta, you're stuck. <laughs> so anyway. That is hilarious. You, got, you, get us, you get us instead of high church. 
<laughs> Good for him. I'm excited for him that he went yeah. to church. And it, it took me a while to find He's even a service. He's called home a few too. times even. Oh, wow. I, my, my mom will tell you, I did not call home for the first, like, two months, and she was not happy with me about that. So I'm glad he's calling home. Yeah. You only like talked to him once because the other two times, voicemail. Oh, uh, gotcha. Anyway, I think we're ready to start. Yep. Looks like they're getting ready to go on stage. So we will see you At after the, the service. So anyway, let's stand, uh, greet one another, say hi to someone, and we'll get going.
everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Guys, so good to see you here today. Thank you for coming. Why don't you go ahead and grab a seat? My name is David Gadini, pastor here at Fellowship of Faith on behalf of the staff and so many volunteers who are behind the scenes making this happen today. Thank you for being a part of what we're doing this morning. And we hope that over the next hour, you, you learn something new about God and that you're drawn closer into who he is and you realize at, at deeper levels, whether you've been following him all your life or aren't really sure about this Jesus thing, discovering at deeper levels that he loves you, he's got a plan for you, and he wants a relationship with you. That's what we're about here as a church, and that's what we're hoping to do here this morning. You might see that on the screens, we've got a slide up asking you to text the word here to 855-465-2720. Just a little way we like to do a base touch every week. Um, we'd really appreciate it if you would uh, text that in right now. Again, 855-465-2720. If we can be praying for you, of course, text the word prayer to that same number. Team elders here that are going to be praying alongside of you all this week in that, and we'll even pray with you personally if that's something that you would like or find beneficial. So go ahead and take care of that, and let me let you know a little bit about what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So next Sunday, we will not have a nine o'clock discipleship hour. No rock, no boulder. No nine o'clock class, but it all kicks off and resumes on September 11th, two weeks from today. What we're doing two weeks from today is jumping into a, a journey we're going to take through a cross section of the Bible. And we're calling it the last apostle, John, the last of the living apostles who followed Jesus and witnessed firsthand his ministry, his death and his resurrection, and what he had to say with his dying breaths before the passing of an age. I'm really looking forward to this, and we're going to be kicking into that with Revelation at our 9 o'clock discipleship hour and the Gospel of John at our 10 o'clock worship hour. So, so come on out for that, and I uh, hope you can be a part. Now, the Saturday preceding, this is Saturday, September 10th, all right? What we are having here is a Faith Step workshop. What's Faith Step? A faith step is basically things like this, baptism, professing your faith in, faith in Christ, confirmation, first communion, membership. You know, in our lives, we have faith steps, don't we? Or in our lives, I guess we should say we have coming of age steps, developmental steps, the first time someone goes to school, the first time someone gets their driver's license when you become a legal adult, when you move and get your own place, when you get married. These are, these are pivotal steps in each of our life that we know. Well, in our faith journey, we've come to find that there's pivotal steps that often happen there as well. Getting baptized into the Lord. Professing your faith for yourself in the Lord. Actively coming forward to take communion and understand what that's about in the Lord. Pledging yourself in membership to a local congregation and the Lord. If you are interested in any of these steps, whether you just want to kind of, you know, kick the tire on it, or whether something's burning in your soul and you really want to just, just full in jump, mark your calendar for Saturday, September 10th. Starts at nine o'clock, block out four hours for the day. Food is provided. Child care is provided upon request. And you can go to our website, fellowshipoffaith.org and simply go to the Faith Steps page. Let me repeat that again. It's fellowshipoffaith.org. Go to the Faith Steps page, and you will find a big red registration button right there at the top. I even think it's on our homepage, um, and you can catch it there. Just go ahead and register. We'll get you more details about it. And uh, yeah, come see what it's all about. We'd love to have you on the journey. Here at Fellowship of Faith, we have got several ways that people give. Um, we are 100% supported by what you donate and give to make this ministry happen. You can go to our website, fellowshipoffaith.org. Go to the giving page for details on any of these. They're right here on the screen, buckets in the back. You can text in, you can do it online, any number of ways to make it happen if you're looking to do that today. Well, this morning, we have something called the Serve Fair. And I'm excited to talk to you about it more in a moment, but we're going to reel a video up here in a second, let you get introduced to it that way, and then we'll jump on in. Take a look.
There are so many ways to serve here at FOF and through FOF. 45 to actually put a finger on it. And those are only what I would call the official ways, not counting the number of ways behind the scenes that people are organically getting moved by God to help someone in need, getting together in groups to tackle a project, or organically just filling in the gaps of things. What's so amazing is that it is an opportunity open to everyone. We have people here who have been members since this church started in 1999, and they serve. We have people who have been coming here to Fellowship of Faith for just a couple of months, and they serve. We have people who are really, really old, and they serve. <laughs> we have people who are really, really young, and they serve. I'm struck by some of our middle school students, even some of our elementary school students, who are active in serving here at Fellowship of Faith. You're never too young to serve, and as long as you draw breath, God has purpose for you in this world to bless other people. You're never too old as well. We have men who serve. We have women who serve. We have married people who serve. We have divorced people who serve. We have widows and widowers who serve, and we have singles who serve as well. Hopefully this gave you a taste, and today we have a serve fair going on, which is basically just an open house. When this service is done, what's going to happen is representative ministry leaders are going to be scattered throughout the coffee house. Hopefully you saw a glimpse of it coming in, and they're just there to talk. No pressure, no strings attached, no blood oaths, no get your name on the dotted line and ha ha, we got you for life. None of that kind of nonsense that often inadvertently happens with nonprofits and, and other organizations in the world. No, 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 just an, an opportunity and availability to say, you know what? Something's been stirring in me. Maybe I want to try something. Maybe I want to experiment with something. Maybe I want to see what something is about. Maybe I never thought I could do something like that. Maybe I thought that God was finished with me because of something in my past or something in my present. And there's no place for me in his work anymore. I'm here to tell you there is. And today, after this service, I encourage you, no matter who you might be, even if you don't consider yourself a Christian, to look at some of these tables and talk to some of these leaders and let God churn something in your life or, or let curiosity get piqued or, 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 or just kind of go, well, maybe something and talk to someone just a little bit more and see what happens in the journey. I'm going to talk to you about a serving myth today, but I want to do something right now. We're going to throw a giant QR code up on the screen. And what this will take you to is our serving page, which will outline details of different serving areas. Short little descriptions for different kinds of ways that you can serve here. A little two-minute survey you can take to even kind of figure out how maybe your interests and gifts and proclivities might marry up against certain kind of jobs or opportunities that we have here. So at any point through this message, if you start zoning out, you start getting a little bit bored, the mind starts wandering, or you're a classic multitasker, just take that picture and play on your phone a little bit and, and let something happen through the process. And as you're doing that, I want to couch this. I want to couch this in two things. I want to talk to you about why. Why we put so much emphasis on this here at Fellowship of Faith. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about the how. And at the end, I'm going to introduce you to three people, three people who have found their way into paths of serving in or through fellowship of faith, and you can hear firsthand their journey, and maybe by hearing their journey, get something for your own journey as well. Now, there's this incredible passage. It's one of my favorite in the Bible, actually. It's in Mark chapter 10, and in the end, Jesus says something, and it's very foundational for us, and I want to share it with you. Now, oftentimes, you know, when we talk about the Bible here, I'll put it on the screen. But then, of course, we wouldn't see the QR code, and we need that, right? 
And I also thought about this. You know what the only thing better than like reading the Bible is or having the Bible read to you? Memorizing it. Ooh. Ingesting it. Let's get away from the M word. The M word's a dirty word, isn't it? I once had my mouth washed out with soap for saying the M word. But making God's word a natural part of you. Now, here's the line. Listen to it, and then we're going to practice this together. Jesus says this, I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Let me say it again. Jesus said this, I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. So Jesus did not come to do what? Okay, listen. (laughs) Jesus said this, I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Jesus did not come to be what? But what did he come to do instead? And how was he going to do it? You got it. Now, maybe you don't have it word for word, but you know it. Don't freak yourself out with learning the Bible or memorizing the Bible. When you get away from all the ways that we've paralyzed ourselves in it, it's far easier than you think. You know it. I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Try it with me. I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Time two, I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. You try Turn to someone next to you and tell them. (laughs) I'm just going to say good job and live in my delusion here for a minute, okay? (laughs) You know it. I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. And knowing what Jesus says is good, knowing the words of the Bible is good, but you know what's even better? Doing them, living them. You can spend your whole life learning the words of Jesus and reading the Bible, but until you act on it, it's only gonna take you so far. If Jesus himself said, Jesus, I mean, this is Jesus, right? If Jesus himself said, I have not come to be served, but to serve, and he lived with that kind of attitude. I mean, we are talking God come down to serve. If anyone deserves to be served, would you agree it is Jesus? It is God. But he says, I have come to be served, not to serve, and to give my life as a ransom for many. And those of us whose hearts have been captured by Jesus, because that's really what this is about here. Not just today, but every week. It's It's a gathering of people. Kind of want to give their lives to him. We're captured by him or enamored by him. Or shoot, some of us even just, man, I need you. And what it means is we kind of want to do what he does. We want to live like he lived. We want to think like he thinks. We want to listen to him because we love him and want to explore his way, which is a very different way than any other way that this world has ever offered. And so what that means practically is that if Jesus says, I have not come to be served but to serve, we seek to do the same. And our hope is that you do as well. That you're willing to open that door and step out and explore what it means to live in a very different way based on the pattern of Jesus, which leads me to the myth. It's a serving myth that I hear in this church and I've heard in other churches and I kind of hear uh, parroted, if you will, in the Christian community Often, maybe you've said it yourself, but but let me share it with you today, and then we're going to spend a little time unpacking it. 
And the myth goes something like this. It's always the same people doing the same thing. Sometimes put like this. It always seems like it's the same people who are serving. Maybe it goes like this. How come it's only these people who always volunteer? Which implies a certain sense of frustration, would you agree? Or maybe just difficulty in the soul that others are not? I want to talk to you about that phrase or any of the iterations that it might find itself in. First, I've simply found that oftentimes it's simply not based on fact. Oftentimes I find that when people are saying it, they're not saying it because they're actually analyzing numbers of how many people are serving and what the serving turnover looks like and all that kind of stuff. Rather, they're just kind of lamenting what they see in their own little world, in the area where they serve maybe in the history they have. And it often comes from a place, I think quite honestly, of feeling the weight of service. Feeling the weight of the responsibility, knowing that this job depends on me and I gotta get it done. And you know, this week I'm just kinda tired. This week I'm just kinda distracted. This season of life, I'm not all in if I'm being really honest. And it just sort of shares a lament, if you will about all of that under language that comes out like, why is it always the same people? You don't have to raise your hands, but you ever been there? You know, you you know this, it's not just church. Maybe it's at your school. Maybe it's in some civic or social organization. Maybe it's some kind of neighborhood thing going on. Shoot, maybe it's even at your job where people are getting paid and it still feels that way. It betrays something, I think. And this is the myth that I'd like to talk about briefly today. Whenever I hear statements like that or find myself saying them myself, I find it often comes from an attitude that believes serving should be a temporary endeavor. Let me say that again, that serving should be a temporary endeavor. That what I'm doing is here simply to fill a short-term need. Sometimes I think it's ratcheted up even worse. That serving is doing someone a favor. That by my serving, I am here to do you a favor to help you out or worse. God, I'm doing you a favor. And we'd never say it. But I suspect sometimes we unknowingly and unwittingly believe it. That's not Jesus' way. Jesus saw serving as something very different. He saw it as what Christian theologians will tag with a very fancy word simply called vocation. Now, when I talk about vocation, I would suspect that you probably hear something like, my job, meaning where do I go to punch my clock or fill out my time Sheet. But that's not what Christian tradition and theology means by the term vocation. This is what they mean instead. Responding to where God has placed you. Period. God has placed each of you in unique situations in various places from the geographical location and neighborhood in which you live to the family that you're a part of, to the school that you belong to, whether as a child or as a parent, to the workplace that you're involved in, to the social circles that you're engaged in. God, we can say, has placed you there. And when you are there, God has laid upon you certain responsibilities. And often, not always, but often, when you are there, those responsibilities are not temporary. Could you imagine a mom, after five years of service, going, why doesn't someone else do this for a while? 
It's kind of foolishness, isn't it? But isn't that what we do with serving, right? Can you imagine a professional ball player? Take your favorite player of your favorite team. I only know like three professional sports teams total, so I can't give you an example. But imagine that person. Think about the arc of their career and how almost, almost universally they always wish they had more to give. But the arm starts to go, the knees start to go, the, the body starts to go. Do they go into the NFL? Do they go into the NBA? Do they go into the major league or the NHL or whatever your variety might be? Going, man, I'm going to do this for two years. and psh. No, they do it because they love it. They know it's short-lived, but how many of them wish that they could play at prime? Or even if they couldn't play at prime, that they could still play in an ongoing kind of way? Do you ever hear them say something like, oh, I wish more people would join the NBA, that way I wouldn't have to do this anymore. I guarantee you it's words that have never been said. And yet when we come into the kingdom of God, how often do we adopt this attitude of going, well, okay, I'll kind of do this for six weeks and, and then maybe someone else will step up. Okay, God, you're welcome. God has placed you somewhere. And the joy of being a Christian, or dare I say a Jesus follower, is learning the joy and meaning and purpose that comes out of living a vocation for life. Oh, to think that the service you give is not so much about helping someone in need or filling a necessary component as a cog in a machine as it is some kind of way of life in response to God, to live like he lives. When people say to me, man, why doesn't someone else want to do this? I'm like, don't you just want to keep doing, don't you, don't you want to keep doing this? Don't you love this? No, I know it gets hard, believe me. I know it gets frustrating, believe me. I know we get tired, believe me. But aren't the best things in life often laced at times with hardship, frustration, and fatigue? Just think of your spouse. Just think of your kids. What's that classic line from that old 80s baseball movie, that name I can't even think of right now? League of Their Own, you remember that? It's the hard that makes it good. Nah, serving God can be hard. It can be scary. It can be monotonous. We can feel like we're not being used to our full potential. Yeah. But it is no less glorifying to God. And when someone gives their life to serve others, because that's what loving your neighbor as yourself really is about. Lowering yourself to help them, lowering yourself to serve them. Jesus himself wrapped a towel around his waist and physically lowered himself to wash disciples' feet. That's a gross job. But he did it, and he did it to show us something, and he did it because that's who he is. I go back to that line I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Do you know the context? It's great how this happens. James and John, yeah, the John we're going to be talking about in two weeks. Him and big brother come to Jesus. And they come to Jesus and they go, Jesus, I've got to ask you something. But before we ask you, we want you to say yes to whatever it is we're going to ask you. Mom and dad, you ever get, kind of get loaded this way? You ever get this kind of question here, right? And, and, and what do you do if you're on your game and you're smart in the moment? Well, what are you going to ask me? Let me hear it first. I mean, the audacity of these two guys, right? Lord, when you come in your kingdom, one of us wants to sit on your right and the other wants to sit on your left. 
all right? Like, no small request. That is like guts right there. That's, that, that's, that's, well, that's some body organ right there, and I'll just leave it at that, you know? You know what Jesus tells him? By the way, that's Mark's version. This is worth noting. And Matthew's version, you know what happens? They don't ask themselves. You know what they do? They send their mom to ask. <laughs> Simple life lesson for you today. Do you know how to determine that you are not great? You know that you are not great if you send your mom to ask someone for you to be great, all right? Just, just, just roll with that and that will serve you well to your dying day, all right? They send their mom to ask. And Jesus says to them, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? Can you be baptized in the baptism I'm about to undertake? And they still don't really know what he's talking about. And they're like, well, yeah, sure we can. No, no, let me clear it up for you. When I come into my kingdom and am revealed in my greatness in glory. Do you really want to be at my right and at my left? Are you, are you following the imagery here today? Because for Jesus, greatness means serving. For Jesus, the glory of God comes out when we humble ourselves and give ourselves for many. That's what this is all about. And so what I'd like to do now is share with you how to go about doing it. Because let's face it, sometimes we just don't know where to begin. Well, we've got a QR code, so we at least know that, and we can like, read information on it, right? But how do I matrix that into me? And I've got one word for you meandering. Do you know how God is going to reveal himself to you more times than not? Meandering. Do you know what it means to meander? Just kind of this weird path, journeying through life, filled with twists and turns and dead ends. I can put it this way, experimenting. I can put it this way, trying things. I can tell it this way, just putting yourself out there where you are and seeing what ends up. Sometimes you'll see these beautiful serving patterns, these beautiful discipleship patterns that look like baseball diamonds, and it goes, no, and then grow, and then go. And then I guess you get to a home run when you die and go to heaven or something like that. As though somehow your life is some, your spiritual life is some like linear base touching that goes in order. I've never seen that to be the case. I've seen many people first go, and by that they begin to grow. And through that they're perked to even want to know. No, the spiritual journey is far messier than all the beautiful one-page diagrams that we can hand you in devotional books that get publishing deals. Try stuff. Try stuff that's weird. Try stuff that's nuts. See where needs are, ways that you can bless other people and love other people, and just do it. Do it as an act of service. Listen to what God is churning in your heart, interests and passions. Take a step on it. Respond on it. And through that, God will continue to show you one step ahead. Not always linear, but sometimes with detours and back doors, sometimes with open windows that need to be climbed through. But God, in the process, will do something in you as you give your life to serving him just Start giving stuff a shot in the situation in life that God has placed you. So I'd like to introduce you to a few people here this morning who are going to tell their own stories in their journey of, dare I say, meandering life and where God has brought them in that. First is an amazing woman who has this incredible story from, I believe, just two months ago, and her name is Ashley Ward. And I'm going to invite her to the stage, and would you just join me this morning in welcoming her as she comes up.
right, Ashley, if you don't mind, maybe just introduce yourself briefly, how long you've been coming to Fellowship of Faith, and a little bit about your, your professional career, because I know that's going to factor in. And here, feel free to have a seat if you'd like. So we've been going on and off for about five years, um, more consistently for the past two. Um, and, uh, and then I'm a nurse practitioner. I specialize in ENT. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming up and doing this today. Yeah. And uh, it was this past June yep. that you went on your trip. Yeah. Tell us briefly about this mission trip that you just went on and the kind of work that was happening. Yeah. So it's uh, Project Hope. Um, they go to Mexico, um, Uganda, and I think Nicaragua. Um, and it's, uh, they've got two parts. Um, they've got like, we, um, we go with mission ministries. We partner with them. They've got the clinic and, and then just extra bodies to help out with the work. Um, they build houses. They, um, they have a school for the kids, um, a day program, and then they have a, a clinic where they can get some medical care. So. Now, you were in Juarez, correct? Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, Juarez is considered now at least one of the top 10 most dangerous cities to be in in the world, <laughs> correct? And I don't know how you measure that kind of thing, but yeah. I mean, you know, you're going, you're going to the Badlands. Yeah, yeah. Here. Our compound was like... Um, it had razor wire with broken glass all around the top with, like, uh, with guards. And, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, yeah. and tell us a little bit about the needs you saw while you were there. Oh, so, um, so the clinic, um, they hadn't had medical care for about four months. Um, and so this was, like, their only opportunity to get some, some treatment. Um, and the kids, you know, they're tough. They're, like, I saw the six-year-old. He, um, he was like, well, my ear hurts. And I told him he had an infection and he needs antibiotics. And he was like, oh, it doesn't hurt that bad. I don't need it because my mom can't afford them. And it's just crazy. Um, and so then um, a lot of them are being, like, mismanaged. Um, see, I thought I was going to bring tissues and I forgot. <laughs> Here's Lexi's music if you... <laughs> <laughs> So much like diabetes, high blood pressure, all this stuff is just, oh man, it was overwhelming how poorly they're treated and, and you know, that they're like living in houses made out of mattresses and tires and it's just crazy. Yeah. Now, this isn't something you sought out. Now, if you would, tell us your story and the story of how you ended up serving in this place. <laughs> so I was just scrolling on Facebook. Um, it was about six weeks before the trip, and they were putting out an SOS, like, hey, we, you know, we had this whole... <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it here for the next two as well, all right? <laughs> um, so they put out this SOS. My, um, my cousin, um, her cousin, is um, one of the team leaders. So um, they had this whole team together, a physical therapist, a pharmacist, um, you know, nurse, uh, phlebotomists, all these people, but they couldn't practice without a medical license. And so um, they were going to have to cancel the whole um, clinic if they didn't find a doctor. So they had two doctors lined up, both dropped out um, because one, you know, like his partner went into labor, so he couldn't leave. And then another one um, um, dropped out. And so um, I, I normally wouldn't even click on that because look the season of life we're in, right? Like yeah. um, I've three little kids and a full-time job, and I just didn't think it'd be realistic. But I went ahead and clicked on it, got more information, and she's like, well, you have to have a valid passport. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I haven't been out of the country for, you know, almost 10 years. My passport had like a year, le year or two left, so that was fine. And then it was, okay, I don't, it's only six weeks away. My clinic's usually full, um, so I don't even know if I have the time off. In February, so like four months prior to this, I had just randomly taken these two days off that happened to be the two days of the trip um, just to like organize the house. So that's not done. Um, <laughs> but, but like I had these two days already off. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Okay. And then, um, and then it was like childcare. Well, Dan and I had already planned a trip and my mom was already coming in from Phoenix to watch the kids. So that was fine. And then the only other thing was like financial. We hadn't really plan for that. Well, yeah, not cheap to do these kinds of things. Not cheap, no. So I randomly got like an anonymous donation that covered my whole part of the trip. And then, um, and then I logged in, you know, to Southwest to look for flights and I had just enough points to pay for the flight. So that cost me, you know, whatever the tax was, six yeah. bucks or something. 
And then, um, and then I reached out to you guys, and and I got some support with like the hotel and stuff. So I ended up going, and it didn't. That there was no financial strain. And so I was talking to Dan, and I'm like, man, I feel like I have to go because it's like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't really have a choice. I feel like so God has backed you in yeah, a corner, yes. right? <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I've taken care of everything. You have literally no excuse. So I went, and it was fantastic. And we're already talking about going again next summer, and. Um, you know, hopefully taking more of the family and it's just a, it was really cool how it all, um, how it all developed. And then in women's group, on top of all of those coincidental things happening, right? I've got enough PTO. I got the time off. I got babysitting, financials taken care of. Um, one of the ladies, I think she's here. I'm not going to call her out. Uh, <laughs> she was reading a book. You know who you are. And she got to the chapter where um, it had talked about doing international like mission work and going to another country. And she said she stopped reading the book. <laughs> 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 because um, she's like, well, I know God's not asking me to go to another country to do mission work. But just in case he is, let's block him out so yeah, there's right? no risk, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that was literally like two days before I got asked to go to another country and do mission work. So it was just cool. Like everything, it just all was very convincing that I had to go there. So. And, and what struck me in, in your story when you shared it with me was not only that you weren't looking for this, yeah. all the excuses, and, and I mean that in a positive way, yeah. but all the, the very realistic reasons why this shouldn't happen, but God removing these barriers and on the aftermath, you have been glowing for two months. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've seen it. You've been talking to people. It's gotten in your skin. I mean, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it seems to have birthed some kind of passion that goes beyond just helping someone once mm -hmm. to, dare I say, even calling, purpose, meaning. Am I overstating this no. at all? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like you're kind of changed yeah. by this and, and see it lifelong. Yeah. Ashley, thank you for coming up on stage so much. Thank you for sharing your story. Let's give her a hand, all right? I'm struck by this because so often it's just responding. It is just responding to the most random thing God might put in your path and with a little bit of curiosity, allowing God to continue to take the journey forward. And you will see and witness firsthand God remove obstacles, provide avenues, it doesn't mean you won't be scared. It doesn't mean there won't be challenge. Hi, girls. It doesn't mean that you won't face things. And through it, God will often shape something in you. If you would like to serve with Ashley or learn more about this ministry, come find her at the ministry fair. She'd love to tell you her story, especially if you're a medical professional here, but even if you're not. Thank you, Ashley. Really, really appreciate it. Got a second story for you, and we're going to kick this one off with a video. Take a look. I know how it feels to be abandoned. To be abused. To be hungry. To be afraid. To have no home or family to call my own. To have no place to go. to live without love. These are the words of an orphan, and there are a hundred million more like me in the world today. Tendo was found abandoned in a trash pit next to a train in the town of Mitiana. All alone in the trash bin. This two-month-old baby was rescued by the Hope Center Uganda team back in March of 2019. Traces of possible family members have been made, but with no success. The Hope Center has been and is home for this three-year-old happy and healthy boy. We are actively seeking to find a family willing to foster and adopt Tendo, to find him a family he can call his own. There are so many more stories where abused and abandoned children have been rescued and saved by the grace of God through the Hope Center.
doing life and instilling hope to the hopeless. The Hope Center is a small Christ-centered baby home located in the heart of Uganda in the Mitiana district and we are the only baby home in the entire area. We employ around 25 Ugandan staff members and are officially licensed as an NGO and 501c3. We take in abandoned and orphaned children who have experienced some of the worst abuse you could ever imagine and give them a place to thrive, a place of hope. Our staff acts as one big family. When a child is brought to us, we welcome them with open arms, providing them with food, shelter, medical treatment, education, and most importantly, love. This would be impossible without the generosity and prayers of people like you. Our end goal is to find them home and a family they can call their own, which could either be suitable members of their own family or others looking for a child to bring into their own family and love. The question is, will you, will you, will you, will you, hope? So I'd like to introduce you to Paul Wells. Paul, if you'd like to come on up. All right, brother. How you doing? Good, good. You get this. Here, have a seat. So you are Steve and Barbie's child. You don't look like them. <laughs> yeah, but... So, so, t so tell us about that. Uh, like, like, what's your relationship here, and uh, how, how did this all happen? Yeah, so back in 2015, I was 15 years old by then. I was, uh, I was raised by my mom and my brothers and my other siblings, six of us. And all of us had to work to be able to you know, pay for a school and stuff like that. And so when I was 15, I went up to the Hope Center, and I was trying to find a job to be able to work um, and then pay for my school. And so I went and started working on the farm, you know, had a little bit of work now and then. And during that time, um, they were coming to Uganda. So they came to Uganda. I met them. We moved around, uh, you know, doing ministry work and with the hopes and all that. And that's how I met them and got connected to them. All right. And if I'm not mistaken, you then came to the States with them um, several years ago, correct? You uh, lived with uh, Stephen Barbie and, and Maya. Um, for what, two or three years through high school? Yeah, so uh, during that time, well, communication, you know, talking back and forth with them, you know, with, on Facebook and texting and all that, you know, got a good connection with them. And, and so I was able to, like, you know, can I come over to the US for school? And they're like, sure. I mean, we've never done this before, but <laughs> we could try. So eventually, uh, we worked on that and it happened. It happened. I came here for three, I think it was two and a half years in Nebraska for high school. And it was a great time being there, yeah. And so you then went back to Uganda. You were there for several years, and you've been back here stateside now for uh, two months or so, a month maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it's been a month. Yeah, so I was, you know, after my high school, I was like, you know, what am I gonna do? I was like, you know, can I, should I stay? Should I go back? And I was living a great mm -hmm. life, I'm telling you that. Um, and back home, my mom, you know, was still renting, and because we lived in a, one single room house, you know, all of us. Mm -hmm. And I was out here living, I don't know, the great life. I mean, it was a life I've never lived in my entire life before. And I was like, I had a choice. I could stay or I could go back and, you know, be with my mom and, you know, get involved with the hopes and a little bit more. And so I made a decision to go back. It was a tough decision. I bet. All of us were crying during that time. So I went back and said, you know, getting involved and walking with the hopes. And it wasn't easy. It was a big transition because I, I was used to taking a hot shower and I had to go back to, I mean, so many other, you know, good stuff, I guess I would say. But, you know, the transition wasn't easy and I started getting involved in the Hope Center, working with them a little bit more. And I was there for three years. Um, and then 
th that's when I came back. So I've been here for a month now. Yeah, yeah, back for school. Fantastic. What I love about your story, too, is you are a native of Uganda, correct? That's right. You're born and raised in Uganda. I didn't know if it was uh, like, you know, in no, childhood I was, I was you came born Uganda. And in Uganda. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Unlike Stephen Barbie or so many of us who travel somewhere temporarily, I and mean, this. This place is your home where this ministry is going on. I mean, it's your culture. It's yes. your family. I mean, you, you have family there and friends there and, mm -hmm. and people um, like that, which, which strikes me as that it poisons you better than anyone to know not only the needs, but how to bring help and hope to people yeah. in your situation. So watching like a video like that, every single kid in that video I know and the story I know, I've We've went in the field to pick him up. We've done this, this, and that. And it's like watching that video, it's like knowing their stories and knowing where they come from. It's a whole different, you know, impact and feel you get with that. And also being here and having both uh, sides of knowing, you know, how it is to live in Uganda and how it is to live here. It just shows me how, you know, God has blessed me in so many ways, you know, being here and even just... Even till now, I'm still working for the hopes and I'm still trying to do, you know, help them like as much as I can, you know, doing online payments and doing all these things, you know, getting in touch with everyone as much as I can. All the administrative yeah. stuff that uh -huh. no one enjoys doing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But even just being there, you know, doing that kind of work, it's not easy. It just comes with so many challenges. And many times you're like, you know, God, why, why did you place me in this kind of thing, you know? And you have so many questions. And it brings you to the point that even when things don't go right for you, it's like you're questioning God. You know, I found myself doing this and I didn't even know, like, okay, God, why I've been doing all this great work, I would say, for, you know, for everyone. But for me, why am I going through these challenges? And yeah. a question like that brings you back to understand you are not serving just so God can say yes to everything you're gonna, you know, you want in your life, you know? And it's like, sometimes you don't even know. And like when those challenges kick in, it's like, okay, this is work of God and I'm not doing this to get nothing from it, you know? But, yeah. It's, it's amazing to me, like watching kind of from afar the trajectory of your life, you know, hearing through Steve, Barbie, and, and, and whatnot that, you know, you were here for three years. There's, there's more food to eat than That's can right. ever be eaten. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you tried, but, uh, you know, but, but there is, I mean, you know, the hot shower thing that you mentioned uh -huh. earlier, uh, yeah. a certain uh, standard of living that's just different here. And then to go back into Uganda to, to serve there and, and to continue to serve them now from here as you do in college. Yeah. Um, dude, that's just mind blowing to me. That's incredible. Yeah, there's so many questions that living here for those three years I lived in Nebraska that I didn't ask myself and I wouldn't think I would ever ask myself again, even right now. But like, I was back in Uganda working for the Hope Center. I mean, I was still, you know, getting paid doing my job, right? But there's a question like, and I, you know, many people I talk to, like, there's a question like, what am I gonna have for dinner? Like, that was never a question. And being here, it's like, it's never even a question sometimes, you know, maybe in some different families, but it's rare. But me even being there, having a job and making some money, that was a question now and then, you mm -hmm. know? But mm -hmm. here, you, you know, you got, I mean, we have so much food in the fridge. And, Every now and then, you run around and go back and get something with it. And it's just great, you know? But yeah, it just kind of makes you and gives you a whole different perspective of life in general. Like, God has blessed me so much, you know, in so many ways. And it, it's, it's really different. Yeah. It's incredible that you're back here, part of this congregation, mm -hmm. continuing to serve the way you serve. Thank you for coming up, just for the, in, the opportunity for me to introduce you to this church. Um, yeah, um, but you. also for you to share your story. Brother, God bless. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's give Paul a hand. <laughs> what I love about Paul's story, among so many things, is the way that he took his natural everyday life that God had been shaping in him 24 7. He knows it better than any of us will ever know it from the States. And choosing to serve in that capacity right from that place as opposed to some hypothetical dream. If you want to know more about Hope Center or Paul's journey or serving that capacity, go find him at the Mission Go table afterwards today. And do this too. Uh, find Paul just a 
introduce yourself personally and set up a time that you could take him to Crandall's Chicken up in Hebron. All right, uh, l- let's get him like like 250 chicken dates over the next um, you know year and a half or so, and um, we'll appreciate it. All right. There's one final person that I want to introduce to you today. Her name is Sally Roth. Sally and I just came back from St. Louis last week where she began a four-year journey through seminary at the age, and I'm going to out you, uh, Sally, at the age of 73 years old. Would you welcome Sally to the stage with me today? Sally, I love it. You're wearing your patch. Sally has enrolled in the Deaconess program at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Here, have a seat. And uh, for the next four years, Sally is going to be going through online seminary education as long as being our Deaconess intern here at Fellowship of Faith. So you're going to be hearing and seeing and getting to know Sally more and more, especially in care and prayer ministry. So Sally, I think the burning question that a lot of us have today is, Forgive me, but given your age, why are you going back to school? (laughs) Got to ask God that question, because I don't know myself. (laughs) I I mean, hearing your story, I almost feel like you feel like you're almost being dragged by God, maybe not kicking and screaming the whole time, but sometimes, right? Sometimes. Tell us a little bit about the journey. So um, last fall, Dave put out a, Pastor Dave, I guess that would be. Dave is fine. All right. Dave is fine. (laughs) Okay. Uh, put out a survey, and I don't usually do surveys, but I did this one, <clears throat> and, um, you know, my kids are all grown, my grandkids are growing, you know, one's driving, so no, I mean, it's like nobody needs me anymore, so I'm sitting in my new home, and I'm looking at my walls, and it's like, okay, God, now what? Don't ever say, <laughs> God, now what? <laughs> Then I get this phone call. (laughs) Sal, we need to talk. (laughs) Be careful when you talk to pastors. It's very (laughs) difficult. (laughs) Anyway, that's how it began. Um, The application um, process to Concordia Seminary was truly one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, and that includes giving birth. Um, (laughs) Three times. Um, The admissions office, by the way, loves that glowing review. (laughs) Hi, guys. (laughs) But that admin department, oh my gosh, they are sent by God as well. So there were times, you know, um, first of all, finding my transcript I graduated with my BA from Concordia River Forest so long ago that they had to go to the rock pile to find my transcript. (laughs) And I don't even remember what it looks like. I'm probably not (laughs) proud of it. (laughs) But anyway. (laughs) Um, So, uh, yeah, so I start this journey, and um, the big thing, well, all the paperwork. Oh, my gosh. And I'm not too technology Savvy, so poor, poor Dave he had to deal with me and, and, and PDFs and all that kind of thing. It's like, oh boy, gosh. So um, anyway, so I got through that part, um, but we had to take three tests: one on the Old Testament, one on the New Testament, and one on theology and doctrine. We had to pass with a seventy percent, and you've got three chances to pass it. Now that should tell you something right there. Ah, after, after a few tries, I did actually pass the theology and doctrine, which was my easiest one, strangely. I thought the New Testament was going to be a piece of cake, <laughs> and I almost quit when I did not pass the New Testament. So every time I ran into difficulties, I sent an SOS up to God, <laughs> and he sent me an ambulance. <laughs> and wouldn't you know, I get a, I get a phone call from somebody, I had no idea who she was, but she was a deaconess already um, in the program at the seminary, and her name was Grace. So there you go. So um, 
don't, you know, keep going, it's gonna be fine, all this encouragement, and I'm saying, oh, I don't know that this is fine, but okay. So, I, w I mean, I was ready to quit before my deadline. So my kids, I have three sons, when I said, okay, I'm quitting, two of them said, well, you really tried hard, Mom. That, that's, you know, okay. My son, Ben, who's with me here today, he says, Mom, this is something you really wanted to do, and you're not even at the deadline yet. Moreover, my grandkids, you're going to quit, <laughs> you know, when I'm encouraging them to get through school. So, you know, it was all this encouragement and stuff, and truly, I never did pass the Old Testament test. I always scored in the 60s. <laughs> they gave me an extra week and an extra test to pass it, but I have to tell you, my Bible, the Old Testament is 1,535 pages. The study guide is 685 <laughs> pages, and you basically had to know every word of both books, and it was, they, the test is so random, it's crazy, so I'm thinking that collectively, in four tries, I probably got 100%. <laughs> <laughs> right? I love it. <laughs> so, and imagine this, and God did not shelve you over the 25%, right? No, yep. he did yep. not. He did not. So truly, God, God has... My, uh, I, I'm very close to one of my cousins, um, all of my cousins actually, but this one um, went to Concordia River Forest with me and we've been really close. He's kind of one of my theological go-to guys. And he said, Sally, your life has been lived for this moment. Hmm. And I'm like, yeah. I've had 73 years <laughs> of so many experiences, both good and bad, and God has always been with me and directing my path. I've never lost, lost sight of the light that Jesus shines in my direction. I love my Lord and Savior so much that it is my, just my joy and my pleasure to be to this place. And um, Yeah, and it is a joy having you in this next step of the journey. Now, I know you mentioned this to me earlier, and, and we can do this if you want, but you said that you wanted to read your acceptance letter. I do letter. want to read my acceptance letter. Why don't letter? we do that? Can I do that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's really quite official in the envelope. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> thought I'd better use my own because it might get wet. <laughs> Kleenex box is right there. Yeah, I got some in my hand, too. I knew that. I'm doing good, though. I, for five days, I have cried almost continually. <laughs> So this is amazing. I cried for four years when I was at Concordia <laughs> Seminary. So well, I, I have a feeling I got four years to go yet. <laughs> but I tell you, the people down there just seem to love me. <laughs> just what? seem to love me. And um, I kind of got a nickname while I was there, didn't did. I, by the end? And, and I'll share it very quickly. She shared some of her story with you. Sally became grandma. Grandma Sally to all of these deaconess students, all of these seminary students, all of these MDiv and SMP people. It's Grandma Sally. You were such a light. <laughs> uh, you know, not because she was planning to be, not because she was setting out to be. You were just being you. And it was shining out and blessing them, I think, more than you were blessed by them. And given how much you cried when we were down there, that's saying something. So, uh, you know, yeah, constant smile. So yeah. let's, let's, let's right. hear the letter. Here let's hear go. the letter. Dear Pastor Gadini, Kimberly Brandt, and the Congregation of Fellowship of Faith. Here I go. I am both humbled and honored, and I mean that sincerely, to declare and accept the position of deaconess intern here at Fellowship of Faith. I am thrilled and eager to begin working with Pastor Gadini in developing and implementing the areas of ministry in which I will serve the members of the congregation. God has guided my steps in this journey, and I truly believe he has called me to this position of deaconess. I ask the congregation to hold me in your prayers, that I will grow in spirit and knowledge of the triune God, that I will stay strong in faith and grow in vision of God's glorious plan to our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. In love, joy, and peace in Christ. Me, Sally. <laughs> Thank you.
Sally, we cannot wait to begin this journey. I thought maybe we could pray over Sally today as this new official beginning comes underway. If you would join with me, Lord God in heaven, thank you for this amazing woman that you've brought to this church and, and the openness of posture and heart that she has had to you, even against the times of, of frustration and fear and difficulty, among the times that she's wanted to quit, among the times when it was beyond what she was capable of. And Lord, you did a work, a work in her and through her and around her, and she trusted you. Bless her, God, and bless us through her journey. God, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Sally, for coming up. I'll take the mic. If you would like information on how to pursue next level church ministry, come talk to me. I'll be back there. And I won't pull a Sally on you, you know what I mean? Like, like she kind of threw me under the bus on that a little bit. But, uh, you know, if you want to investigate or explore, I'd love to chat. You know what I love about Sally's story is that retirement for a lot of people means golf or TV or travel, and these are wonderful, noble things. But she said, God is not finished with me yet, and my best, my best years are not behind me. There's something that I want to continue to grow into, to do, to serve by. And do I need to describe the joy that we're seeing of what God is doing in her. Open your heart. Take a step. See what God does in you. Welcome to Jesus' philosophy of serving. So I'm going to invite the man to come up. And here's what I'm going to invite you to do. If you haven't taken a shot of this yet and, and followed the QR code, it will take you to our serve page. And what I'd like you to do for the next two minutes, that's all it should really take, is you will find a big red button on our serve page that talks about this little survey that you can take. I want to invite you to take it. It should take you no more than 100 seconds, maybe, but we'll give you two minutes, 120. Take a brief little survey and just, just as a way of exploring, just as a way of saying, God, what's out there? Just as a way of saying, God, what's cooking in me and how might it match with things that are happening here? See some of the responses that it kicks out. If you'd like to talk to me or anyone more about it, follow up. It should be pretty intuitive, but I encourage you, pull out your phone. Do it right now. Don't delay. Take a step, even if you've taken steps before, in exploring a path today. God bless, guys.
Pray with me. Lord, devote us to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Fill us with awe at the wonders and miraculous signs done by the apostles. Bring us together in common. May we sell our possessions and goods to help those in need. We will continue to meet, breaking bread in our homes and eating together with glad and sincere hearts. Receive our praise, O oh God. May we enjoy the favor of all the people. Add to our number daily those who are being saved. And may the God who called you and who calls you, may he guide you, convict you, open paths before you, and surround you as you step out in his name. God bless. Thank you for coming. We hope to see you this week. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, guys. Yeah, we're running behind a little bit today. Yeah. Kind of, but what else is new, right? Yeah. Very cool to hear all those stories of how 
we you have. You know, I forgot that Ashley went Me too. to Juarez. Me too. That's that's incredible. I mean, I was talking to people in here when they when she said compound, you don't usually mm. hear compound referred to as a medical facility. So that should go and show you how incredibly dangerous that is. Yeah. A city. I mean, in the top 10 most dangerous cities in the world. Mm. That's crazy. And to be able to go in there and do what she did, that's awesome. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she was at the dinner I was at last night, and oh. I didn't get a chance to talk to her about it because it didn't even. Right, and she said she went in June, right? So it's been a few months, or was it July? Was, was it last that week? Was I, I don't remember. I think she said it was in, Ju in June, but. Okay. But still, I mean, yeah. that's awesome. I, I mean, obviously she got emotional. I, it, well, that yeah. Kind of Life-changing experience. Well, exactly. I mean, not just going over to a different country like that, but being part of a medical in the medical side of and things. Just seeing, and just seeing such a deep need. Right, exactly. A deep need and that can so easily be that addressed. That we, we don't even think about. Yeah. Basic care that we get all the time. Those, these kids even aren't yeah. getting afforded yeah. that luxury. It's uh, definitely powerful yeah. to think about. Yeah. And, and her story, too, is like she was telling me before she went, like all of these pieces were just falling into place. You're like, I can't ignore yep. this. I kind of want to, that, but I can't. That's like like Dave said, God has got got her into a corner. There's no escape. Yeah. Got to go now. Yeah. But I mean, there's a reason why she did. Right. And she had that experience. and It was an amazing experience that God had personally picked out for her. You know, So it's really cool. Vocation. That's a cool word. Oh, yeah, I like that. Vocation. Yeah. Vocation. I wrote it down. Let me let me pull it out. Okay. So the service that you give is not about helping someone or filling a cog in the machine. It's about living the life God has placed you in. The life God placed you in, that's yep. your vocation. Yep. It's not your career. No, no, no. It's not your role as a parent or a student. No, I mean, the, the it, one it involved that, all of that. Right, exactly. That's so cool. So vocation. cool. Vocation. You know, a lot Love of times that. you hear vocation is like church work. Right. Right, Which but it's, it, it is in a way. I mean, technically it is, but yeah, but I mean, vocation really is a, is church work. God is calling you to do this, so that's why you call it like I a pastor's have a accepted vocation church. as an accountant. Yeah, and so I'm not working in a church, but it's my vocation. And you're helping people, nonetheless. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I like Paul's story too, Paul. coming from. I love Paul. I know he's, I love he's a great Paul. guy. Great guy, and it's really cool because he's going to MCC. You know, he's. Yeah finding a career for himself, maybe to help him go back to Uganda or maybe for him to stay here. He has, you know, something he's figuring out. But, I mean, coming from, I mean, I've gotten to know a little bit more about the Hope Center, getting closer to yeah. Steve and Barbie, and, I mean, that's an incredible place. Yeah. I mean, that's a place that needs to be there. You think about a need, that place is a need, yeah. 100%. And, I mean, he, from what I understand, he wasn't just working there. He was running it. Oh, yeah. Until he left, oh, right? Yeah. So that's really cool. And he's younger than me, and he was running a... A center. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Sally. Yeah, and Sally. Sally. We love Sally. She is. She's just a joy. Just she's a bright light. Just I mean, she's wearing yellow bright. today, yeah. but that pales in yeah, comparison. Just, she's just so this, yeah, she's so so kind and loving. Yeah. She, awesome. Just couldn't be happy for her. I'm so happy that she was, you know, taking this step and everything is seeming to even itself out. I know it was a little bit choppy yeah. for a little while, so I'm yeah. happy she's pulled through. So that's awesome. So did you guys follow the QR code? Justin, you did. I did. And I you got did. different results. I got different results. So uh -huh. stuff that I didn't really think about before. Uh -huh. um, not necessarily something I'm, I'm I'm very active in a leadership role. I'm, yeah. a, I'm an elder and I'm leading. I have groups that I lead and that kind of thing. So that's where I feel like I'm most needed. Yeah. Other things I don't really think about. And they said that was like my top one of my top three categories was um, ride share, like hospitality. Ride share. Like, Interesting. Or whatever they call it, like helping people get to church who can't get. Huh. So I never even thought about that before. So maybe that's we, something I'll so look into. Years ago, years ago. I mean, you're talking like two decades ago, right? We were at a church, and um, there, there was a, a trailer park down the road from us. And so we started picking up a couple people. And I don't remember anything about them except that Joyce has a funny voice. And that's how uh -huh. I remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce with the voice. Joyce has a funny voice. That's funny. And she talk like this. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't grovel. It was, it was really funny. It is funny. <laughs> I took the, quest, the test too. Did you? Just during the service. Did you get the same results? My first one was the same. And it was yeah. barista. Yeah, my which, top two 
were relatively the same, yeah. but there's two more that they added in my top five that I didn't yeah. have before. I know that I answered some of the questions differently. So did I. Because some of the questions were like, how well do you re relate to kids? And I think before, I'm like, I have kids, so it's high. Yeah. And this time, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to put medium. Yeah. Mine is definitely not so well. Yeah. I don't. That's not where yeah. I'm called. I'm more of the old, calling to the older generation. I think my number two was like age. gift planning assistant or something. I'm like, yeah, mine was, yeah, I could do I that. I think elders was four for me, which is good because I'm an elder. And I believe part of a nonprofit, which I am with Firm Base. Yeah. Yep. Um, that was also, I think, three. So I'm good. My top right. two, though, are interesting. All right. Let's talk about what we got. Mm, tonight. Oh, tonight is the Boulder Parent Meeting. Yep. So if your kids are in Boulder age, which is sixth uh, grade through high school, seventh grade through, through high school, yeah. Sixth grade through high school, parent meeting tonight. I think it starts at five. Okay. I don't uh, know the time. know this. Uh, this is a really good informational meeting for you guys. If you have students of this age, kind of get an idea of what Boulder's all about. You can ask questions. It, you can talk about what they're going to do for the year. It's uh, very go beneficial. Ahead, if you guys have never been to Bar Boulder before, even yeah. if you have, please go because you'll get a layout for what Boulder has planned for the this school year. I was right, 5 p.m. tonight. 5 p.m. tonight, okay. So that's so tonight at FOF at parents, 5 p.m. Parents and students attend. When meeting is completed, students will stay for the campfire Ooh. and games until 8 p.m. Okay, sweet. And they're not going to kick out parents, I'm quite certain. No, parents that parents can, I'd imagine, you. I'd imagine so. But don't <laughs> quote us on that. I'm saying yes. Yeah. We <laughs> I and we make no call, yes. no uh, <laughs> decisions for, make no decisions yeah. for Boulder, but I'll I don't see decisions. why not. Yeah, yeah why not? Bah. It's a campfire. It's outside. They're not going to kick you off the ground. No, nah, right. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. If they, can they I, even do we, that? We belong to a church that they kick people off. No, see, I don't, uh, I don't like anything about churches kicking people uh, out of it anything. Was so, it was so, not this, not not today's. Yeah, next time. Not for, anything that needs to be shared publicly. <laughs> <laughs> Just to say, we understand church hurt, and if you guys are experiencing church hurt, we, we can help. It. We can walk you through that. Uh, let's be honest. FOF was started because a, a bunch of people of had hurt. church hurt. So Yeah. We and get a lot it. of people that have come since have experienced yep. church hurt. Yep. There's yep. no hurt like church hurt. Yeah, really. It just, eh. I can really screw you yeah. up, like, especially with your faith journey. Let's kind of tie this back in, which means that there, you need to have people to serve. Right. Because, hey, I've been there. I, I, mm -hmm. I can help you walk through that. And whether yeah. that's, whether that's let's deal with this church hurt while we build a house for Habitat for Humanity. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Or whether it's let's deal with church hurt while we're doing this Bible study together. Right. Speaking of Habitat Humanity, if you guys have... That sort of talent where you are good with your hands, you're good with building things, fixing I'm things. Not. I'm okay, I'm not the best, but I'm good at taking directions. Uh, there's going to be a lot of serving opportunities through my nonprofit that I'm a part of, Firm Base, that I'll be Firm sharing base. with you once we get more details. Um, we use all the help that we can get. Good. We will let you know as we get closer, obviously, but if that's something you're interested in, um, more opportunities to come, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm. 9 10, September 10th, then is the Faith Steps training workshop. Right, on Saturday, which starts at 9. 9 to 1. 9 to 1. Lunch is provided, job care provided. Dave teaches. I, I don't know if he has like other people come in because. I, I think he said he was teaching this one, but I don't remember. Don't quote yeah. me on it. I'm pretty sure great, I read an email about it. No pressure. It's not like if I come, I have to join, or if I come, I have to get back. This is it's totally more of an informational. informational. Right. And yeah. like Dave said, sometimes the thing holding you back is you just don't know where to start. And this is a great opportunity for you to dip your toe in, yep. so to speak. Kind of find out what we're all about and not just about our church, but ways to serve and find something, find a home for you. So no obligations, like you had said, just yep. come and find out. And then out. in two weeks, we're starting in the last apostle, the lost apostle. What did he call it? The lost Last? Oh, uh, the Lost Apostle would be cool. The, the Last Apostle would be awesome. It sounds like a Dan too. Brown yeah, book. kind of. <laughs> But no, so jumping the, right the back whole, into a series. The whole like school year is going to be focused around John, Love and so it. the 9 a.m. is Revelation. And let me tell you, what the book of Isaiah is for me, the book of Revelation is for Dave. Yes, he loves his book, and he and you can mm. tell by the studies he puts out on it. So tune in for 9 a.m. in two weeks, right? That's yeah. September so it's not going to be live stream, but I know he does record it and it's on and he FOF puts it on Plus FOF or Plus, something, yep. and, and you can listen to or it or so. come in person or come in person. Yeah, if you can. Um, and then jumping into the Gospel of John. And I know at some point we're getting to like to the book of John, right. like John 1, 2, 3. I think we're oh, talking about those. Oh, nice. He's got the whole thing mapped He's, out. Yeah, so it's going to be a very exciting school year. It's very devoted to John. So we're very much looking forward John. to that. John's a spirit guy. John. Right? He's got to be a spirit guy. Sure. Yeah. I imagine most of them were. Yeah. 
I don't know. Never met him, unfortunately. John's gospel. I, I think I heard recently that like, John's gospel is different than the first three because the first three are kind of like historical, and John starts like, yeah, once upon a time. Yeah. And you know, like in the beginning was the word. Like, a like fairy what does tale that mean? Almost. And the word was with God. I don't know. That's just, cool. Yeah, I'm excited to learn about John. Me too. I don't know yeah. much about him. You know how him, Sally so. was saying how she had to pass all these tests and how she it was hard for her. I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm not sure if I would want to take a test. No mm. way. Heck no. My anyway. test taking is behind me, hopefully. I'm like halfway between being able to see it and halfway <laughs> not see. The lighting isn't great uh, in that corner. Anyway, I think we're good. I'm, I'm, I'm got, got it all covered, what I oh, want to speak oh, about. This Wednesday, oh, bop, bop, this Wednesday starts the midweek services. Okay. We've got lots of groups, and a few of them have a few people signed up. So we need more people. Come on out, Wednesday nights. Starting dinner at certified dinner at 30. Oh, oh, and this Wednesdays are different because we have dinner at 5. To like 5:45, okay, and then from like 5:50 to 6 is going to be like a little service, oh, like a little right. yeah. quiet, meditative, yeah. or I remember acoustic, or I don't know what it is. So it's like a Something prayer a little service, kind of, yeah. Yeah, cool. and then at 6, Bible study starts. Um, then and groups then, will start throughout yeah. the night. Then, yeah, super excited. There's so, yeah. information on our website. Come in if you can. That'd be cool. Be mm -hmm. awesome. All right. So hopefully we'll see you Wednesday. If not, we'll see you next Sunday. Yep. Have All a right. great week. Great guys. Bye.